In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to set up and solve a tetherball problem. So for these tetherball problems, most of them seem like they don't have enough information. And with all the pieces of information in this problem, it seems like it's not possible to solve for it. Um, but what you really have to do is stick to the process, um, set up your force diagram, your sum of the forces, and then solve for all the values you can. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We have a problem that asks for the velocity and the tension in the rope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start off with our force diagram and see if we have anything on an angle. If we have a force and angle, we're going to go ahead and break that into components. And then we're going to go ahead and set up our sum of the forces from there. So I started with my force diagram and the sum of the forces in the y direction in the vertical direction and the sum of forces in the x direction. So I have my force of gravity pulling the tether ball straight down as usual and then I have the force of tension right along the string here on an angle and because my FT doesn't fit directly into the x or y direction I broke it up into components which is basically just closing off a right triangle and providing the horizontal component over here, pulling it to the left. And then we have the vertical component pulling it up. So when I sum up all my forces in the Y direction, I have FTY in the upwards direction. So I left that as positive and I have my FG pointing straight down. So I made that negative. So FTY minus FG equals M times A. And then I know that is gonna be zero Newtons because there is no movement or acceleration in the vertical direction. So I can safely say that it's zero. Now, in the x direction, so that's kind of like how it like loops around the pole over here, we just have this FTX and then that's it. So that is my net force in the x direction and that's equal to M times A. Now, if you take a look downwards at this tetherball pole, um, then you would actually see the circle. So from the profile view, you're not actually gonna see the circle. Um, but if you take a look from the top view, then it would be, this circular shape where this would be the pull and then the ball is circulating around the pole just like this. Okay, so this FTX is pointing towards a pole and that pole is towards is the center of our circle. So because it is pointing towards the center of the circle, it is our centripetal force. So we don't wanna use this A, we wanna go ahead and replace that with V squared over R, R is our centripetal acceleration. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're going to plug in all the values we know at this point and then see where that takes us. So as of now, uh, we don't have too much information besides this angle right here and then the mass of the tetherball itself. So we're able to so solve for FG. And then from there, we weren't able to solve for a whole lot. So we want to eventually find the velocity and the force of tension. So 
Um, as I'm looking at it right now, I see the velocity is right here, but I'm missing a couple of things. I'm missing my FTX and my radius. So I don't think I'm going to start there because I have a few unknowns over here. I only have one unknown FTY minus my FG, which is 0.3 times 9.8. Um, so I can solve for my FTY. So if you take 0.3 times 9.8, that's 2.94 Newtons. So if we just go ahead and add 2.94 to both sides, then our FTY equals 2.94 Newtons. So now that's really significant in our problem because now we just found out that this value over here is 2.94. So once you have an angle and one part of your triangle, you can always use some trig functions and solve for every other part of the triangle. So I can already see that I'm gonna be able to solve for my force of tension because my force of tension is the hypotenuse of that triangle. So if I go ahead and redraw that triangle, I want this FT, I know this is 40 degrees, this is 2.94. And then here's that FTX, which is going to be useful to me because we have an FTX down here. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a couple trig functions and then solve for my FT and my FTX. So there's a few different ways I could have went around about this problem. I decided to use the cosine of 40 degrees. So um, cosine is adjacent. So I already have my adjacent side of 2.94 um, over the hypotenuse of FT. And then if you cross multiply these, the FT flips over here. So it's basically 2.94 divided by the cosine of 40 degrees. And we have our first answer, FT equals 3.84 Newtons. Now for the next part of the triangle, I decided to solve for that because I saw an unknown FTX over here that looks like it's going to be useful to me. So I used um, tangent in this case. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. So opposite of the 40, we have our FTX over our adjacent side of 2.94. Cross multiply this 2.94 up and over. And my FTX came out to 2.47 Newtons. So if I went ahead and updated my information over here, I have 2.47 equals 0 0.3 over V squared over R. So I'm going to go back and look at my information. I have my mass. I have one meter for the string. So this whole entire length of the string is one meter. So that doesn't look like it's the radius though. So if it hangs at 40 degrees, and what is the velocity and tension in the rope? All right, so if I wanna find my velocity, it looks like if I found my radius, then my only unknown would be my V squared. So this is the part where it can be a little confusing because we're gonna set up a second triangle. So my second triangle is gonna be um, sort of similar to this, but this is a triangle um, representing all the forces. So I'm gonna draw a triangle representing all the distances. So it's still a 40 degree angle, but my hypotenuse is one because this is my actual string length right over here. So why is this useful to us? Because if we 
find either one of these sides now we have extra pieces of information so how is that going to help us solve for this over here um, it's actually going to give us our radius so as i said before from the aerial view this would be the pole and then the tether ball string would be sticking out over here and then here would be the tether ball itself so the radius of the circle is just the distance from the pole to the ball so it's from the pole to the ball over here so it would be this distance over here. So we'll call that the X component, and then we'll call this the Y component over here. So we don't need to solve for this Y component because it's not gonna be helpful to us. Um, it looks like we just need the X component of this triangle, okay? And again, it can be very confusing because we have two triangles, two right triangles with a 40 degree angle, except this one is representative of all the forces, and this one is gonna be representative of the actual lengths or distances. So with this one, again, we're gonna go ahead and use a trig function. I'm gonna go ahead and use sine. So I can use the side that's opposite of the 40 degree angle along with my hypotenuse of one, and I can go ahead and solve for that radius. So I have sine of 40 equals X over one. So again, sine is opposite. The opposite end is the X component um, over the hypotenuse of one. So if you cross multiply the one over sine of 40 is still gonna be the sine of 40, which comes out to 0.64. So the length, um, the horizontal length is gonna be 0.64 meters. That is our radius. Okay, now we have everything we need. We can go ahead and put the 0.64 in right over there. So we can um, solve for this a couple different ways. Um, so what I would probably do is divide both sides by 0.3. And then we would have 2.47 over 0.3 equal to V squared over R. And then I would multiply both sides by 0.64. And then we have V squared equals um, the product of these numbers over here. So then we would just finish off by square rooting it. Okay, so in my calculator, I would go ahead and put um, 2.47 divided by 0.3, um, and then take that number, multiply it by 0.64, and then square root it. And that is gonna leave me with my final answer. And my final answer comes out to be about 2.30 meters per second. All right, so to recap what we did, um, we are setting up our force diagram as usual with our um, forces in the X and Y direction, and we sum them up. We have no vertical movement of the ball because it's looping around horizontally. So we have FTY, um, our Y component of our tension, subtracted by FG because that is downwards and that's equal to zero. Um, so that was really helpful to us because that allowed us to find one part of our triangle, which led to basically all the rest of our solutions over here. And then in our X direction, we have FTX equal MV squared over R. That FTX was really helpful because that was our sole centripetal force for this problem. And then that allowed us to solve for the velocity at the end. So again, the tricky part is setting up our two triangles. Um, we have one triangle for forces to solve for anything um, with these two formulas that we created. And then in addition, we set up a triangle with distances so that we could find the X component over here and then find the radius so that we can go ahead and finish this portion of the problem and solve for our velocity. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand and solve a tetherball problem. Thank you for watching and listening.